It's astounding that as many as one in three HIV-infected people believe that HIV may not cause AIDS, that HIV treatments do more harm than good. That is a really dangerous myth. AIDS denialism is essentially a movement that fuels this misperception that HIV does not cause AIDS. Every continent has an AIDS denialist website in every major language in the world. And so this information is more than readily available. In fact, it's more accessible than the scientific information. And, and so this has really become a significant public health problem. In the early days of AIDS, in 1981 through really 1985, 1986, there were a lot of people that were getting very sick and dying of things that people just didn't normally get sick and die from. It was in those early days that there were a lot of theories and a lot of hypotheses, and, and they were legitimate. Within a few years of the first cases, the HIV virus, the virus that was then later determined to cause AIDS, was discovered. The facts that accumulated in the late 1980s became indisputable. However, some of these scientists who had these original ideas, which at the time were not fringe, particularly Peter Duesberg, who really believed that the virus is harmless. There is no HIV specific disease anywhere. The, the scientists didn't support it, but he held on. He has held on to this day. He's wrong. The concern isn't what the denialists are saying. Crazy people say things all the time. It's who's listening to them. That's the harm that's being caused. One of the great crimes against humanity in our time was the state sponsorship of AIDS denialism in South Africa. What we had was a president, former president, Mbeki, who assembled an AIDS panel that was divided between denialists and scientists. He gave them equal playing ground. And he based his health policies on what the denialists were saying. What we saw was a delay in HIV testing, a delay in HIV prevention, and a delay in HIV treatment that we now know from Harvard researchers and researchers in South Africa culminated in the unnecessary deaths of over 330,000 people. The costs of denialism are on the level of a genocide. Is debate good in science? Yes. Is dissidence good in science? Absolutely. There are a gazillion disagreements and debates in aid science every day. It's different from denialism. When ideas end, when they're shown to be wrong, when there's no evidence for them, they're replaced with other ideas. AIDS denialism is frozen in time. They're old ideas that never gain support. And so they're not a part of science.